Hello, everyone. I'm just going to give it another minute to allow uh, attendees to join in, and then we'll go ahead and begin today's webinar. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining our November California Brokers Business Accelerator on Are You Prepared for 2022 with Tom Bullock and Michelle Beeson. I want to quickly remind you of a wonderful product from Sharp TC, our in-house transaction coordinators. Sharp TC will not only be your transaction coordinator throughout your entire transaction from start to finish, but when your transaction closes, your clients will receive a closing gift box directly from you, but you don't have to lift a finger. Sharp TC does all the work. Each transaction done with Sharp TC uh, is only 400, but you can get your first transaction done for 250. Today's webinar is sponsored by Movement Mortgage. We have three loan officers available to you, John Solak, Tricia Hamilton, and Raquel Ivory, uh, that you can reach out to anytime to ask any questions. Let's go ahead and start with today's topic. Uh, remember, if you have any questions during this presentation, you can type them into the chat box on your Zoom control panel, and we will do a Q&A at the end of this presentation. I will now pass it over to our speakers for today, starting with Tom Bullock. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great morning and uh, preparing for Thanksgiving week. Um, speaking of the holidays, uh, please, I want to remind everybody to be safe and uh, take care of yourselves as well as, as your family. So um, that's a big uh, uh, thing for, for me. Uh, when Anthony contacted me and said, what do you want to talk about in November? You know, November is a great time for reflection. And by that, I mean, you know, what has happened in 2021 uh, with regards to your business? Um, did you accomplish the goals you have set up for yourself? Uh, did you pay attention to the business plan you developed at the beginning of 2021? And how did that all work out? Did you keep in touch with your business plan? So I'm moving forward with the thought today of 2022, where are you headed with your business? You know, number one, you need to set goals. I'm a firm believer in goal setting. You know, when my kids, uh, when my son and my daughter were going through school, I would always take them out to dinner uh, late August, early September, and uh, to a nice restaurant, we would dress up and I, and I would ask them to be prepared to talk to me about the upcoming school year as to where they wanted to head. Where did they want to head with their GPA? Where did they want to head with regards to their extra school uh, activities, uh, whether it was sports or any other activity at the school they wish to participate in? And we would sit there over dinner and, and discuss those goals. Um, most importantly, they would hand over to me at that dinner their written goals and their written plan for the upcoming school year. I applied that, that activity to my business, my real estate business. I was in production at the time. And I found that it was immensely uh, to my benefit for me to identify, first of all, identify the goals. What, where do I want to head next year? Where is it I want to... Uh, what is it I want to accomplish? How am I going to go about accomplishing that goal? And I found that, number one, in setting your goals, the number one rule is you must write them down. It's too easy in our busy world to forget exactly what it is you're trying to accomplish. And then when you do kind of remember the vague details of what you wish to accomplish, you don't remember the details, which is the most important part of our business. So write it down, write down your goals. What is your production that you wish to accomplish? How do I go about determining what I want my production to be? First step is to reflect. Reflect on 2021, take a look at what you accomplished in 2021 with regards to listings, with regards to sale transaction, and then take a look at that and say, okay, well, I made X amount of com in commissions in 2021. I sold X amount of houses um, 
some were on the buyer side, some were on the listing side. So now how do I even that out? Or do I want to get more into listings or do I want to get more into buyers? You know, you have to identify what your purpose is with the business and how you wish uh, to succeed and accomplish your financial goals by knowing your strengths and your weaknesses so you know what you need to uh, shore up on and what you need to understand uh, moving forward. So number one, write down your goals uh, and then write down uh, in detail what those goals are. Uh, in other words, I, I want more listings. How am I going to go about getting more listings? What have I done in, in 2021 that was successful? You know, a, a helpful hint is to do a start, stop, and continue type presentation to yourself. And number one, you need to look at 2021 production. What worked for you? What was successful? What did you find that worked the best when you were communicating with your clients, whether that's buyer or seller? What did not work for you? You need to stop those activities. You know, sitting at home trying to figure out what to do. So, you know, action makes success. Uh, trying to figure out what's working or not working is good, but you have to have a plan implementation of action uh, in order to accomplish what you wish to achieve goal-wise. And then you take a look at what didn't work for you and you say, okay, now I'm going to stop doing that. Um, but now I want to start something new. And what are those new ideas that I'm going to be looking for? And then you write those down so that with the extra time you have now with the stopped activity, you can fill that time slot with active, uh, with active new activity. You know, some of the most successful agents I know of in this industry, people I know for, for decades now, <laughs> I've been at this a while, um, have a plan. Uh, they have a schedule. And the most important schedule I've seen with successful agents is that they hit the phones at nine o'clock in the morning. They get up, they go in, they go to their, their desk, and they start making calls to previous clients. And just to say hi, you know, uh, you don't have to reach out to every client every day, even every week, even every month, but you need to reach out to them a minimum of once a quarter, if not once a month. And just to catch up, you know, you, you're, you just want to keep your name in front of them. Number one, you care about them. You, you have successful business dealings with them. You've succeeded. They've succeeded because they have the home of their dreams. And you're an implement. You're a big part of that, that success. So keep in touch. Show them that you do care. The biggest downfall I find with agents is that they, that they try to reinvent the wheel. They sell a home, uh, they sell a listing, and then they forget to uh, keep in touch with their clients. Uh, they move on to the next client and the next client and the next client, and they never stay in touch with the people that they've already got to develop the rapport with. Again, some of the most successful agents I have, I have come across and, and have the privilege of being friends with, uh, they have the schedule. Uh, they send out emails, they make phone calls, and they do it on a regular basis. Because when those people have a change coming on, whether they want to upgrade or downgrade or sell or have friends or family members that, that sell, yeah, I want them to, you know, the first name to come up would be your name. You know, let me give John a call or Sally a call. Um, God, they really took care of me. They keep in touch. They, they really, really care about me. And so let me let me put them in touch so that my friend, my family member will have good experience as well. Um, a, a story some of you may have already heard me say at one point or another um, There's a really, really successful agent here in San Diego who I've been friends with for for a long time. And he told me the story once that going back at the beginning of his career. He sold a home to an entry-level, first-time home buyer type purchaser and really took care of them. Uh, after the close of escrow, he kept in touch with them. And, and this couple were so happy with, with the agent, uh, they recommended him to other 
um, people they were working with in their workforce. And, and as a result of that, the agent got additional business from, uh, from those referrals. One of those referrals, after buying and selling a few times as they were upgrading and, and using this agent, called them one day and said, you know, hey, my brother-in-law is coming into town. Um, would you mind selling him some property and showing him property? Because he's, he wants to buy, he's from the Bay Area. He wants to sell or purchase something in San Diego. So the agent said, sure, I'll be happy to sell it, show him property. So the guy shows up the following weekend. The agent picks him up, takes him around a few homes. The guy was looking for a million dollar type property at the time. Now, this is going back quite a few years. And after looking over the weekend, uh, the agent took the client back to the airport. The client said, you know, I really didn't see anything I liked there. Um, what I'd like to do is, is, you know, maybe let's go to the $2 million range next weekend and see, see what we can find there. Next weekend comes, the agent takes the client out, they show him property. Again, the guy's not enamored with what he sees. He ups it to four to five million. As it turns out, this client um, was an, a top executive with Facebook. And so you can only imagine that from an entry, first time home buyer type purchase, it led to what eventually turned out to be a multi, multi million dollar transaction. And even more than that, uh, this, this uh, Bay Area client was so enamored with the agent, um, he had, they had formed a group of Facebook executives and they were looking to buy property in San Diego for investment. And they used this agent for all of their purchases. So, you know, again, entry level, first time home buyer type client gravitated and, and went on to become a multi, multi, multi-million dollar transaction and a very strong business for this particular agent, who, by the way, is still active and is still doing business with these, with these people. So you want to, again, set your goals, write them down. Most importantly, as 2022 progresses, you want to be sure to review those written goals. Set time aside at some point during every quarter of 2022 and review those goals. Find out, are you on track to achieve what you're after and what you want to achieve? Are you behind? If you're behind, what steps do you need to take to step up your pace so you can catch up in the second quarter? You know, you constantly want to look at your business and review your business. All the successful businesses, real estate or other businesses, they're constantly reviewing what their strategy is. They're constantly reviewing their course of action and how to make sure they're on top of their game. Each of you should be doing the same thing uh, with your business each and every corner, uh, a quarter. Uh, you know, again, review 2021 production. It's important. It's important because you can learn from it. You can learn from the past. And so that's exactly what you're doing here. You know, yeah, this worked. Yeah, that didn't work so well. Yeah, maybe I'll change my approach on my listing agreement. Maybe I'll, um, you know, step up my buyer presentation. Whatever the, whatever the case might be, constantly review your actions, your activity. You know, maybe I need to make more phone calls. Maybe I need to reach out more with emails. Um, you know, emails are fabulous because it's a great marketing tool and it really costs nothing. You know, you can send out happy birthdays, you know, to the husband, to the wife, to the kids, happy graduations, happy anniversaries. And it's a great way to, again, to keep your name in front of people. People like that. And if you continue to do that, again, it's a great marketing tool for you because it keeps your name in front of the client. Um, review your, your goals. Um, if you do not Review your written goals every month, because if you do not review your 2020, uh, 2022 plan of business, um, will go nowhere. Uh, you'll have no plan of attack. You have no written documentation to yourself as to what you wanted to achieve. We're all motivated right now because we're excited about 2022 and what's coming up. You know, know your marketplace. You know, know where you believe interest rates might be going. Um, so that you can better educate your clients and, and potential clients when you're talking to them. You know, the more information you give them, the more credibility you 
put on your shoulders and, and produce. So again, keep yourself updated with current real estate knowledge. Um, know where interest rates are going. For example, I was reading an article this week uh, where they believe interest rates will kind of stay steady uh, where we are now through about mid-year, and then they anticipate that May, June, you could say, uh, see an increase coming up. Now that can change, obviously, and our lenders can help you with that. But keep in mind, you know, if, if you believe that, that the rates will stay relatively steady, which helps both buyers and sellers, then you need to talk about that, you know, because you don't know what's going to happen in May and June. Maybe nothing, but maybe there'll be a hike in, in the interest rates. So you need to be aware of that so that if your client is riding the fence, do I sell now? Do I buy now? You know, you, you want to be able to kind of help them make that decision as best you can. The final decision obviously is theirs, but you have to help them with that decision and you help them with knowledge. Keep in mind certain activities. And, and you know, what I have found is that if you keep it simple, the simpler your business plan, the better. If you get too complicated as to what you're gonna do each and every day, each and every hour, um, it's not going to work. You're going to get burned out trying to keep tabs and keep up on what you should be doing and, and then feel bad about what you're not doing. So you want to keep your business plan simple. You know, keep in mind what activities you're going to do. You know, I'm going to make my calls uh, in the morning from, you know, nine to noon. Um, I'm going to try to have coffee or lunch with clients from noon to one. I'm going to be prospecting from one to four. You know, I'm going to be doing listing presentations after five o'clock. What, whatever the schedule might be, make sure you, you have it written down and that you keep it simple. Simpler your business plan, the more success you'll have with it because you'll stick to it. Know your marketplace. You know, throughout California and, and all the audience here are spread out throughout the state. Everybody's market's a little bit different. You know, some are more sensitive to interest rates. Some are more sensitive to price point. So you know your marketplace and know what factors are affecting that and what factors might affect that as the, as the year progresses. So be sure to make sure you stay on top of your, your local marketplace, uh, keep in touch with your lenders, keep in touch with your title company, um, not even develop relationships with escrow um, officers. You know, they want your business just like everyone else. So ask them, you know, what are you seeing right now? What is the biggest hiccup you're seeing with your transactions? And help to apply that to yours so you don't come in and run into the same issues other agents are running uh, into. Um, play nice. That's a big one. You know, you, I, I, both Michelle and I are, have conversations once in a while about, you know, people seem to be agents I'm talking about here seem to be at each other's throat. You know, they're quick to jump on them, quick to point a finger, um, rather than just trying to play nice and, and accomplish the goal for the client, and that is to sell the home and close the escrow and buy the home and close the escrow. So, you know, sometimes that entails eating a little crow on our side. Just even if the other side is completely incorrect, you know, it, it, it's a matter of trying to play nice Present to them in a good manner that, you know, hey, listen, you know, this is what my, you know, and use Michelle and I as the bad guys. You know, I talked to my broker about this and, you know, this is kind of what the direction they gave me. What do you think? You know, and see what they have to say. Try to be nice, stay on friendly terms, because the last thing we want to do is, is have the buyer and seller develop an attitude about each other because the two agents have an attitude about each other. And both Michelle and I have seen that. It doesn't work. And, you know, once the escrow closes and everything is said and done, people just want to move on. And you want to make sure your client is the one that's being taken care of. So you do that by playing nice. This is a great business. Uh, you know, when it comes to playing nice, I mean, I, I've talked to agents on both sides of the equation that have said, you know, I'll never, I'll, whatever client I have uh, and, and I see an offer coming in from this particular agent, I will advise my agent or my seller not to accept the offer because this agent is so difficult to work with. You don't want that reputation. So please uh, play nice. Um, stay up to date on your forms. And, and next month, 
I know Michelle's going to be talking about uh, the new forms that will be released in 2022, effective January. So Michelle will be talking more about that. If you have any questions, uh, reach out to your broker. In the meantime, just give us a quick call. It's the best way to reach us. It's the best way to get a quick response to whatever the question you have, whether it's forms or whether it's an issue. Uh, just reach out to your broker uh, at the beginning. That way you can resolve any issues before they become issues. Um, so that's really kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, you know, the business plan to me is the most important feature and factor uh, as you head towards your successful 2022 business. Stay in touch with your broker, brainstorm with your broker. Um, if you have issues, obviously call your broker. Um, but, you know, keep your business plan in front of you. Keep it simple. Um, always, always refer to it. Uh, keep tabs of your production in 2022, each and every month. You know, you should have a written log so that you know you did X amount of business in January, X amount in February, X amount in March. So then as you prepare to go into the second quarter, you can take a look at January, February, and March. And don't panic if you see a seasonal low in production happen. For example, you typically the holidays are not a good time for real estate sales. But in my production days, I always found that to be very helpful to me because a lot of agents kind of slacked off. And what I found was that the clients that I was dealing with were more motivated to purchase even during the holidays. So I had some good production months uh, in late November, December. Uh, but you know, typically as you get into the first of the year, it takes a, a week or more for the January business to start picking up. Uh, you know, again, summertime, you know, when schools are out and kids are getting ready to start school in the fall again, it's typically a good time of year for real estate sales. Because families want to get into their new home. They want to get settled before the school year starts. So know your, again, know your area, know your production in your area and play that to your strength. Um, that's really what I have for today. Michelle, do you have anything to add? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to, um, Tom touched on everything. I'll just add a little bit to it. Um, just guys, remember your database is so important to have an updated and accurate database. And you get KV Core with Alice and James, which is a fantastic tool, not only for your database, but also for marketing and keeping in touch. And you can automate so many things with KV Core. That being said, don't be automatic all the time. Everything shouldn't be automated. Like Tom said, and I can, I can concur, the most successful agents I know, you know, Tom's been in it forever. I've been, you know, nearly forever. And the most successful agents we know are ones that some of them, all they do is keep in touch with their past clients and they're always top of mind. But the key, I think, is that they do it in a personal way. You know, like I said, they, their database is so accurate and they've got a schedule for reaching out and they read that database and they know when the anniversary is, they know when things are. And sometimes, you know, you find out something happened and that's also important to know when you update your database. So I have to add that, I mean, the database is so important and also knowing your contracts. Um, so what we've done is we've been teaching page by page and recording page by page on the new contract that's coming out December 16th. You guys can access that in our video library. So if you have any questions on how to do that, you can reach out to us or support, but know your contracts. The contract is now six pages longer than it was. Um, it comes out mid-December and, and start utilizing it because it is a great contract. It really um, makes your job, in my opinion, more simple. So know your contracts, maintain your database. And finally, I'd love to see, you know, we get wrapped up in, you know, the way things are going and how they're working and, and, and trying to make it seem like you're doing a great job. But ideally, you should be focusing on your client's experience. And if there's one thing, and I know Tom can concur, if you're, if you're letting your clients know every single thing that the other agent is doing or what the other agent is saying, you know, you're not improving their experience with you at all. You know, they're not, 
you're all you're doing is stressing them out. So play nice with your peers. Peer relationship is so important. And I would say in the last five years or so, that kind of uh, mantra has been lost. You know, you want to have a good reputation with your peers. You want to work well with your peers. You want them to say, this has been the easiest transaction. And you want them to say it even if it wasn't, you know, even it because you're handling it, you're doing your job and you're not, you know, letting your egos get involved. So really that's about all I have to add on that. And, um, you know, guys just focus on 2022, 21 was a crazy, crazy year. Um, and, and maybe it was a little easy for you guys to make money. And sometimes that happens. And then sometimes it gets hard, but if you've got a great, if you're focusing on your database, keeping in touch with your past, past clients and making sure your clients have a phenomenal experience, and you've got a great reputation, you will be long-term successful in this business. Absolutely. You don't need all the bells and whistles. Oh, one thing I'll add is just be careful when you're busy and you're signing up for this and that. And how many of you have signed up for things and then not used them? So, you know, it's probably a good idea to have a budget and stick to your budget. You know, what you're going to spend on advertising, what you can spend on toys and tools and all of that stuff, you know, that you're using to generate your business too. And you really can be successful if you focus on the basics as well. And especially if you make your client's experience a phenomenal one. And that should be your primary goal and knowing your contracts. <laughs> so that's it for me. Well, thank you very much, Michelle and Tom, for all of your wonderful insight. And thanks again, everyone, for joining us today. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. And goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.